let's pretend, yeah. as my daughter would say, in your imagination, right. that you were CEO of Home Depot. Right. What would you think about the tariffs we, that we heard uh, yesterday from Mr. Trump, from all the going on in the White House in terms of the uncertainty on trade? I would have a much broader understanding. What does that mean? Well, I don't think it's. In, I'm intrigued by these these people that make their living in politics, whether they're elected or they become consultants or lobbyists or whatever. Donald Trump is the fever. The disease is the anger of the American people mm -hmm. and the disgust of the American people with their elected officials. The American people in 2016 did what was perceived to be a very draconian thing. They elected Donald Trump president of the United States, fair and square. And this nonsense that he didn't win the popular vote, take out L.A. and take out New York, and he, he won the popular vote. What I'm saying is that how do we feel about tariffs? You tell us the rules, we'll play by them, and we'll do everything we can to win. Right, but you don't get the memo and then all of a sudden it's law and you have to make the changes. So I want to show this chart to you, Ken, because this is a capital spending expectations that we've seen right. fallen off a cliff. How would you be able to make any asset, you know, cash allocation decisions as a CEO right now? Look, as long as I'm getting demand for my product and if I'm outstripping my capacity to, to uh, take care of that demand, I'm going to have capital spending. At the end of the day, this is all noise. I, I believe what we're seeing here with the way of tariffs is posturing and jockeying, and we all need each other on this earth. Okay, now, that said, help me out. If you go back to basic economics, if you made guns better than I can make guns, but I made butter better than you can make butter, I made the butter and you made the guns, the old mm -hmm. guns and butter. Yeah. We have nations now that manufacture cars. Explain to me. How did our leaders allow Germany to put a 100% tariff on cars we make here to sell to Germany, and yet all the cars that Germany makes that they sell here is a 2.5% tariff? That's a bad trade. Tells me one thing. The people that made these deals didn't have the slightest idea what the hell they were doing. One of the things we're seeing here, frankly, is the, 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 the powers that be that we're here for the moment down in Washington are frightened because guess what? We're waking up to a lot of bad deals that were made. Now, do we blow up the world to correct those things? No, we don't. We sit and we posture a little bit and we, we rattle, saber rattle, and we do all that kind of stuff. I have no doubt, I mean, I'm the perennial optimist, this will all work out. China has already said this week that they're going to allow more cars. Buick's biggest market in the world is China today. Yeah, but where do they make those cars? Here. They're no, gonna... the Buicks get made in China. That's fine. GM makes all their cars they sell in China in China. That's fine. As long as we have a market for what we make, we have to make sure of one thing. And remember this. At the end of the day, what drives people more than anything else is their wallet. People vote with their wallet. This is what these geniuses who spent their lives studying polls and telling people what they need and what they don't need. I got to tell you something. I'm not going to comment on Trump or his behavior or what he's done. I'm going to just say one thing. I see the American people saying, wait a minute, you guys, enough. We've had enough of this crap.